when you look at all the adults in the United States, you have what's known as a bell curve. And everybody remembers bell curves from economics and from mathematics. So when we talk about the extreme left and the extreme right, and you look at a bell curve, you're literally talking about the shallow ends of the bell curve. Yes. So that means the shallow ends of the bell curve on both sides are making the majority of the content, the noise, the criticism that we hear. Well, what about everybody in the fat part of the bell curve? That's what I call the silent masses, right? The silent middle part of the bell curve. Those people don't necessarily agree with the crazy left or the crazy right, but they listen because that's what's out there. And they are always kind of difficult to pin down because they have some beliefs that lean left and some beliefs that yes. lean right. So it's really important to understand that when you, t when you ask your question to me, what about the people who want this perfect utopian, whatever, 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 that is a small population that really has surrounded themselves with only one one source of information yeah. that's feeding this garbage to them that somehow the world and human beings are good. Human beings are not good. Human beings aren't kind. They're not generous. Can people be kind and can people be generous? Absolutely. Especially when they have an excess of resources, right? There's a reason why the Middle East, like Bedouins in the Middle East, there's a reason why they fought their entire history while people in the Amazon learned to live at peace. Because mm. one had naturally more resources. I don't feel like I have to fight you to the death over a mango when there's 600 mangoes growing around us. But when you're in the middle of the desert and there's like one date tree and that one date tree produces 50 dates, we might have to fight to the death to make sure that I have dates to feed my family for the next month and you don't. Do you really, in saying that though, that people aren't kind, are you falling potentially into some of the same trap from a human nature perspective that you talked about with the bell curve though because my thought immediately goes towards well just like you said these annoying people on the ends of the bell curve make up 95 percent of the noise the annoying people who are either you know all bad or like i don't know holy or something like that they tend to make up the bell curve on at least from what i see on a foreign scale and, and diplomatically and things like that. So do you think it's more like you've seen the worst of the worst in the environments you've had to be in? Cause it's not like you were sent into great environments. They didn't be like, they're not like, yo, Andy, we're going to send you to Utopiaville over here <laughs> with all these fucking people who are happy and they own nothing and are happy, you know, all that shit. Yeah. They sent you to places where it's like, yo, you, this guy's got to go. I think more than that, what it was is my experience with people around the world in different conditions, like you're describing, has shown me that we're not as different as we, we try to think we are. Mm. So maybe in, in poverty-stricken Southeast Asia or poverty-stricken Africa, maybe there you'll actually find two 10-year-olds that hit each other with clubs. That might actually happen because they're fighting over whatever, right? You wouldn't find that in most civilized parts of the United States. But that doesn't necessarily mean that violent thoughts don't go through their heads. Mm. Right. So when I say that people aren't, aren't kind, what I mean is people aren't kind. Like what happens is that when we have an opportunity to show kindness or selfishness to somebody else, usually the first thought that goes through our head is a thought of self-preservation, a thought of survival. What do I need? If what I need is met and I have excess, then I'll share it with you. If I have excess time, then I might say something kind. If I'm if I don't have time and you need kindness, I might just walk right past you because but, I'm not going to I'm not going to spend what time I don't have trying to comfort you or say something nice to you. Are you commingling urge with action now? That's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like you're referring to the natural just like you said we have 70,000 negative thoughts out of 120 a day, which actually I thought that was low. Mm. I would have said it was 80 or 90 because mm. humans are wired to run away from the fucking bear chasing them towards their cave, right? That's right. not a positive thought. <laughs> like our, we're wired towards survival, fighting off death. That's like the meaning of life, which is a very bizarre thing to think about. But like when you're talking about they're not kind, you are referring to those initial impulses, not necessarily what they end up doing. Correct. Correct. Because okay. what you end up doing becomes a matter of how many resources you have. But our, it, our initial instincts, our initial reaction is going to be self-preservation first over our fellow man, which is completely the opposite of what people think of when they think of utopia. And they think in utopia, they think that your fellow man's watching out for you. I'm sorry, that's not how human beings work. We are pack animals. We are tribal creatures. 
which means we bond into packs and we bond into tribes, not because we care about the other people in the tribe. It's because we know that the tribe can take care of us. That's what makes us tribal, just like wolves, just like lions, right? That's why we come together, because we see a benefit for ourselves when we're together. How do people gain your trust? Uh, I don't know that people gain my trust very well. There's, That's what I thought. Yeah, the number of people that I trust, I mean, I, I can count them on my two hands. And when I think about the people that I trust, it's really more, who do I trust to do certain things? There are some people I trust to actually have my back no matter what happens. My wife is one of those people. No matter what happens, I know she's got my back. Then there's other people that I trust, but maybe just short of anything, right? Somebody says something shitty about me on the internet, somebody will back me up. Somebody takes me to court, some, some guys will back me up, but not all of them. Was it like that before the CIA too? No. Yeah. yeah. So the CIA does a great job of kind of helping you to understand your own flawed points of view. Like most of our, most of our um, values, our preferences, our ideas about how the world works, most of them actually are conditioned into us through childhood. So they're conditioned into us by what we see from our parents, what we see in our family, what we see on television or in the movies, um, what we learn in church, what we see in school from other children. That kind of conditions us to be the way we are. So when you are brought up in an environment that's maybe public school with a little bit of you know, uh, church on Sunday two or three times a week, let's say, now you're being raised to kind of inherently believe that people are gracious and people are kind and people are, you know, suppo you're supposed to do things to help each other and you're supposed to work together and teamwork makes the dream work, right? <laughs> and you're conditioned to believe that stuff. Well, all it takes is a child that's raised somewhere differently. Maybe not, and maybe not in a public school, but in a private school. This is a fantastic uh, example when you consider uh, public school students versus private school students for the very wealthy. Have you ever wondered why it is that the children of the very wealthy have a higher success rate in terms of long-term success than the children of the not so wealthy? It's because the children of the wealthy go to school where wealthy, where wealthy people send their kids. Mm -hmm. They grow up around wealthy kids who are also raised by wealthy parents who are surrounded by wealth. Yeah. Exactly. So they learn very early on. You got to pick who you choose. There's a whole group of people that are worse than you. They're poorer than you. They're needier than you. They're not going to have the opportunities you have, but they're also raised with that idea that you have a responsibility. You have to take care of the wealth that your mother and I have made. You have to take care of the family name that your father and your grandfather and your grandfather's grandfather before him built, right? So they're, they're still messed up in their own way, but they're, they're conditioned differently. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.